Hey everybody, Dr. Scott Stevens here. You're going to be using pivot tables for a number of things in this course. It's a very useful Excel tool. In particular, you'll be using it for your first project. Because of that, I thought it might be nice to give you a little more detail about how such things are done. So if you take a look at the screen down here, you can see that we're looking at um, some data on different kinds of cereals, about 70 different cereals. And for each one, we have a bunch of information. Who manufactured it, how many calories are in a serving, how many grams of sugar, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, how many milligrams of sodium, um, and fiber, potassium. What shelf was it on the store, the top, the middle, or the bottom? And then another text thing about whether it is in the middle shelf or not. That's kind of the sweet spot for marketing. And then some other information as well, including a rating with way too many decimal places. Let's see how we could work with this data if we needed to uh, analyze it. In particular, I'd like to point out that pivot tables are a great way to gather information about qualitative variables, categorical variables. You can see here that, for example, if I wanted to know how common Kellogg's was compared to, let's say, Post, I'd have to count them by hand or do some other more complicated thing. Pivot tables make this really easy. So let's see what we need. To get things started, you want to have your data set up so that every uh, column is a different qu quantity and the first row of your table, it doesn't have to be row one, but the first row of your table has to be the names of these various columns. And that's how I've got it set up here. To create the pivot table, I'm simply going to cl click inside the data somewhere and say insert and choose the very first thing on the menu that appears right here, pivot table. Frankly, it's going to guess where I want by expanding my selection into that entire rectangle full of data. So it's made a guess as to what information I want, and that's the correct information. So I'm just going to accept the defaults and say, put it in a new worksheet. OK. Once we do that, things look like this, which looks kind of empty. This is where our information is going to go, but the computer doesn't know what to put in there yet. So let's do it now. Let's, for example, find out how common each of the different manufacturers are in terms of the 77 kinds of cereals that we have in this data set. So I'll go over here to Manufacturer, click on it, and drag it down into this rows area. Now when I do, you'll see that all the different manufacturers that we have over here are now listed. In fact, they're listed in alphabetical order. If I want to know how many of each of those there is, I can grab that same thing, Manufacturer again, and bring it down to the Values area. <coughs> And it now tells me that General Mills is, has 22 different kinds of cereal. Kellogg's has 23. Moltex, the manufacturer of something called Mapo, a maple cereal, has only one. Now, this is an actual count, but I might prefer a relative frequency. And to make adjustments to what's being reported here, I'm going to go over to click on this, this uh, term, right, and then go up to Value Field Settings, which is the only thing from this menu that you're ever going to use. And I can set different things here. Rather than saying count, for example, I could say the sum. This is good for numeric data if you want to keep a running total. And sometimes you do keep a total. The average of the values, and so on. The biggest, the smallest. Since these are categorical variables, most of these don't mean a lot. But one thing that I can do is go over here to show values as. And instead of showing them with no calculation, I can say show them as a percent of the grand total, or the column total, or the row total. We'll talk about those things later. So percent of the grand total, OK. And now that I see, here's 100% of the different kinds of cereals. 29% of them are made by Kellogg's, almost 30. And only about 7 or 8% of them are made by Nabisco, the National Biscuit Company. OK, well, that's nice. But suppose we wanted to know also where in the store these things were being stored. What shelf were they on? Well, I could do that by grabbing the shelf uh, term here and drag it over to the columns heading. And now I've got a table that shows the three different shelves, one, two, and three, and what fraction of the cereals end up on each shelf and of each kind. So for example, of all 100% of the cereals, 7.79% uh, of them are General Mills cereals that are on shelf one. 9% are General Mills cereals on, on shelf two. And 11.7% are General Mills cereals on shelf three, meaning that 28% of all of the cereals are in General Mills. And as we can see here, 46% or 47% of all cereals are on shelf three on the lower shelves in the, rest, in the uh, grocery store. OK, I can make these things so they report different values. For example, maybe I want to know how do all the cereals break down in terms of um, Let's put it this way. Of the things that are on the top shelf, it's only 26%. What fraction of those are General Mills cereals? Well, I could do that too. I could go in here, I could say, instead of referring to the count of manufacturer, I could say, I want to know for my affiliate settings, I want to know the percent of the column total. 
like this. This is great, by the way, for uh, conditional probabilities. It's saying this, if you're on shelf one, there's a 30% chance that you're General Mills. If you're on shelf two, there's a 33% that you're General Mills. If you're on shelf three, there's a 25% that you're General Mills. And I could do it the other way around. I could go over here and say, don't give me the uh, fraction of the column total. Instead, give me the fraction of the row total. If I do that, now the conditional is on the row. Of all General Mills cereals, 100%, 27% are on the top shelf, 32% on the middle shelf, and 41% are on the bottom shelf, and so on. So there's a lot you can do with that. Okay, what else do you need to do? This is a two-way table, and this is going to be a very useful thing for data analysis. But let's look at something different. Let's look at calories. I'm going to get rid of the shelf label, and I'm going to get rid of the manufacturer here. And instead, I'm going to say that what I care about are calories. I'll drag it down here. Well, it tells you here the sum of the calories. That is for all the different kinds of uh, companies. What is the sum of all of their product? Well, there's a whole bunch of these, so you shouldn't be surprised that the total is bigger. I might be more interested in something like this. Don't tell me the sum. Tell me the average number of calories in a General Mills cereal. So we can see here when we look at the various kinds of cereal that Nabisco has a relatively low average in terms of number of calories, while General Mills on average is pretty high, and Rolston, the manufacturers of Purina and the Chex cereals, um, are actually the highest. Okay, um, let's say that we have a lot more things to look at. Instead of putting manufacturer here, let me put the actual name of the cereals. Bam, there they are. There's a whole bunch of them there, and you can see all the different calorie counts. All right. Well, let's not worry about the actual names of the calorie of the cereals. Let's instead take a look at the calorie count themselves. I'm going to drag calories into this first area here, and I'm going to find out here are the various different amounts of calories that things have per serving. And as you can see, there's only a few different categories. So I could ask how many cereals have each of these. Go for the sum of calories? No, I want the count of calories. How many things are there at each level? So we see that there are a bunch of cereals with 17. There's 17 different cereals that have 100 calories per serving. Sometimes you end up with even more numbers than this. For example, let me get rid of calories and put instead, uh, let's say, carbohydrates. Now you see I have a whole bunch of different values, probably too many categories for what I want. Maybe I'd like to gather them together to group them. This turns out to be a pretty easy thing to do. I'm going to click on that first column, right click and say group, and it will tell me its best guess as to what I might want, starting at five, which was the smallest value, ending at 23, which is the largest, and counting by ones. Well, I could do that, but maybe I decide I want to count by twos. When I do that and say okay, it groups the data five to seven, seven to nine, nine to 11, and so on, creating the groupings I might like. Using our two to the k rule, we would expect about two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, about six or seven categories here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That might be a little too much. If I want to change it, it's very easy. I'm right clicking and saying group, and I'll change my group size to three and say, okay. Here's the new table. It now has six categories, which is a little less than I was really hoping for. I could play around more with this, but of course, this data is fine now to put into a histogram or to put into another kind of graph. One more thing I'll point out. Sometimes you might want to use this data in a chart, and when you ask Excel to create a pivot chart over here in the pivot table menu, it says, I can't make that kind of chart. No problem, just grab the data, copy it with Control C, hit Control V to paste it out here, and now you can work with this data the way you can work with any other data, for example, to make a histogram. Those are basically the skills that you're going to need on most of the pivot table data that you're going to want to work with, particularly the stuff on the project. So I hope this was of some use to you, and uh, good luck with everything. Talk to you soon.